What's going on guys, Max here, and let me tell you, I have had a wonderful last couple of weeks. I've just been catching up with some old friends, seeing some people I haven't seen in a long time. You know, I saw my old friends Lincoln, Zelda, and they are doing amazing, dude. I have, they're better than they've ever been. You know, Link used to be kind of a quiet guy, but he's like an open book now, I swear. It's like night and day. Um, I saw my old friend Mario, and you know, he's always so progressive, always on top of the newest thing. You know, he's wearing all these different outfits. He traveled across the globe, I guess. Crazy stuff, but anyway, so today we're here. I'm visiting my friend Kirby. Um, haven't seen him in a while. I'll be honest, I, I actually visited him a couple years ago and I don't know, it kind of felt like he was stuck in the past or something. I don't know, maybe it was just me, but yeah, we're here today. I'm gonna see how he's doing, so let's see. Well, no answer, but let's just double check. Kirby? Kirby? Oh, Max, what up, Duke? I didn't even see you there. <sighs> My bad, bro. I was just listening to this new Spice Girls record. Have you heard it? It is off the chisane. Um, I'm pretty sure the last Spice Girls record came out in like 2000 or something, but yeah, I could probably find it on my phone. You have music on your phone? So you work for the government now? No, no, it, it's just an iPhone, but anyways, what's new with you, man? How are things? Yeah, dude, I've actually been fan flipping tastic. Um, I've been practicing my cursive quite a bit and it's starting to look really good. If you need someone to write you a letter, I'm your guy. Trust me, super professional, like something out of a newspaper. Uh, what else? I just finished watching this TV series called The Cosby Show. Oh my God, let me tell you, Bill Cosby is a saint. <laughs> I never knew I could laugh so hard at such wholesome family comedy, dude. <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, that that's awesome, dude. But you know what? I, I just remembered today I, I have to feed my cat today. I gotta go, Kirby. I'm I'm so sorry. It's it's about that time. Oh, I just rewound my VHS tape of Free Willy so we could watch it. Are you sure you can't stick around? No, no, dude, I can't. Oh my god. I'm so sorry you guys had to see that, but I just can't hang out with him anymore. Kirby hasn't changed one bit. While some of Nintendo's most popular franchises have been swept under the rug in this new millennium, Kirby has gotten the posh treatment of having almost 30 games made around him. This does include some spin-offs, but a large chunk of these revolve around that same idea introduced in those first few Kirby titles, and Star Allies is no exception to this. There is the usual overworld, now made to be 3D and more similar to the Mario games version, but functions practically the same as their 2D counterparts in previous games. While it is a lot prettier to look at, there's actually only four different overworlds in this game, with a couple of them being substantially smaller than the other two. In total, it comes out to about 40 stages, if you include the bonus ones, which is a little under the amount of stages found in both Planet Robobot and Triple Deluxe and both of those games were priced at $40 on the 3DS. Before I dig too deep into the stages themselves though, let's talk about the controls and the gameplay. Controls are essentially the same, with the exception of the new heart throw button that is used to capture your three star allies. Instead of just being able to copy a single enemy's ability, Kirby can now technically carry around four abilities at once, with the inclusion of those three star allies. Just like most previous titles, the copy abilities function pretty differently from one to the next, but are honestly pretty trivial in combat situations, as most of them will just one-shot basic enemies. Because you're able to carry multiple abilities at once, some of them can actually collaborate with each other in different ways. 
If you've got a weapon like the sword or the cutter, you can raise it up in the air to let one of your allies give it an elemental attribute. This is actually a pretty cool feature and does change the functionality of the weapon quite a bit depending on whether it's fire, air, or water, or whatever, but like I said, most combat situations can just be handled by mashing the attack button with whatever ability you have. There's also abilities that can be used collaboratively to perform a special attack, which is really one of the coolest and major features introduced in this Switch title. These can be used to interact with enemies, of course, but also be used to interact with the stage's environment, but I'll talk about that just a little later. So although they're very few, the stages do flow together pretty well, and like most Kirby games, are largely based around the specific copy abilities that you can find in those stages. This is actually where the game tries to do something right, in that it creates puzzles focused on either specific copy abilities or collaborative friend abilities, and most of these challenges are pretty fun the first time you encounter them. The problem is that none of these puzzles are particularly challenging. After the first time you complete a puzzle, you'll usually be able to do it again just by pressing up on the thumbstick or just somehow watching your star allies do it for you even though you didn't even tell them to. That happens a lot in this game. Although it's been around and expanded upon, I think that the idea of using copy abilities to interact with Kirby's environment is really one of the keys to innovation in these games, but they really haven't used that idea to its full potential at all. Another big change in stage mechanics in this game was the inclusion of the platform initiated friend abilities, which I would say sort of takes the place of the armor suit concept in Planet Robobot. These are almost like little mini games with different controls and objectives sprinkled throughout the stages. Some of these are sort of cool the first time, but like most of this game, start to feel gimmicky and mindless towards the end, especially when you're playing co-op as these are designed around a single player and can sometimes be pretty lengthy, resulting in one player staring at their phone for large periods of time while the other just wishes they could do the same. There is a pretty fun and unique sequence in the final level that uses one of these platform initiated abilities, and I really wish they would have implemented it better throughout the whole game instead of just in that final stage. Most of the boss fights in this game are recycled from previous titles and used twice throughout the story mode. There's actually four brand new bosses with some new and different mechanics, and I think I did die once on the final boss, but other than that, these are just super simple, mindless fights. I found myself trying to handicap my playstyle by using non-conventional copy abilities as going into a boss with pretty much any elemental weapon just means pressing attack a few times until it's over. Like I said, the four new bosses and the updated King Dedede boss, those are all pretty fun, but there's almost no moments during these fights or really across the entire game where I felt like victory wasn't guaranteed. You could say the same about the first couple boss fights in Super Mario Odyssey, but at least those bosses get progressively harder. This game's difficulty plateaus around the end of the first world and doesn't really increase until the final stage. And please do not try to tell me that these games are made for kids, so they should be easier. This has the same rating as Super Mario Odyssey, and if I was some sort of normie, ignorant parent just wandering around Target trying to find a game for my young child, I really wouldn't see the difference between these titles on the shelf. The price is the same, the childlike branding is the same, the ESRB rating is the same, but I wouldn't know that one is much more challenging and mature than the other just from looking at the box from a normie perspective. Nintendo has become known for making games traditionally made for kids, but that can be enjoyed by a wider demographic through novelty and slight challenge. We even have Labo now coming out a month later from Star Allies that's specifically marketed to kids, so please, again, do not try to tell me that Nintendo is trying to keep Kirby dumbed down for the younger market. They have that all the way covered. It sounds good on paper, but it really doesn't make any sense when you actually think it through. After completing the main story, you're going to have three mini games unlocked as well as a couple new core gameplay modes. The mini games are kind of fun, but I really only seriously played them once. These are a staple in the series, so I'm glad to see them return in some form, but for some reason I just remember putting hours into the three mini games included with Nightmare and Dreamland. Part of this I figured out is because those mini games are scattered throughout the story mode instead of just in the main menu, but honestly I did play those ones back in 2002 when I had less acquired taste and a lot longer of an attention span, so maybe it's just nostalgia. The first unlockable mode is called Guest Star Adventure, which is basically just a time trial mode, except you can't play as Kirby himself. You're just stuck with a single ability throughout the entire run. 
You can actually pick whatever ability you'd like, regardless of the stage you're playing, which is pretty cool. There's also random heart buffs that you can find throughout to boost either your speed, attack, or health. These aren't really necessary, and they also make this mode less viable for speedruns, as the only beneficial power-up for speedruns would be the speed power-up, of course, and the RNG factor of how you find these makes it so that not every run is going to be an even playing field. This mode also takes out most of the friend ability puzzles, which essentially takes out the biggest thing that sets this game apart from its predecessors. The second unlockable mode is basically just a boss gauntlet. There's varying difficulties and they give you a finite amount of health and food between bosses, making this really the most challenging part of this game. I did enjoy being challenged and played through this mode a couple of times, but in the end the combat just isn't compelling enough for me to really try to hone my skills at it. Having Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild come out in the first year of the Switch is really going to be a blessing and a curse for Nintendo. On one hand, it showed how great a game could look and innovate its gameplay on this new system, but on the other hand, it also set the bar to incredibly hard to reach heights for the rest of Nintendo's hallowed IPs. Because of this, and the fact that this is supposed to be a kid's game, I really tried to take it with a grain of salt, but really, with all the hype of the Switch, Kirby Star Allies could have been one of the best 2D platformers of all time but really just turned out to be a good take on a formula that's worked the same for the last 20 years. I think that the most fun that I had with this game was playing the co-op mode, but I'll be honest with you guys, the second time that I tried to play this game with a friend, we ended up getting very bored very quickly because we actually ended up beating it and just did the boss mode. Um, so we just put in Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle and did our usual versus mode a few times. I don't know, I guess we're just mature adults and we'd rather play the sophisticated, cute little bunny themed game instead of these easy kid games. Yeah, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me, dude. <sighs> this is a top five Kirby game, don't get me wrong. If you're a Kirby fan like I am, I'd definitely pick this up at some point for the experience. Maybe wait for a price drop. If you're just looking for a quality 2D platformer on the Switch, I would definitely point you in another direction. Um, this just isn't up to par with something like Rayman Legends or even just Shovel Knight, which is half the price and five times the hours that you'll get from Kirby Star Allies. Let me know your thoughts on this game down in the comments. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel for the latest Switch content available. This is Max from Max Culture and thank you so much for watching.